Hello, welcome to the sleep clinic. My name is Angelica, and before we enter into the sleep clinic, like the actual, actual sleep clinic, or like the whole process, I must forewarn you that you can't speak loudly in the clinic because we do have sleeping patients, so it is recommended, strongly recommended, that you whisper or speak softly while within the perimeter. Is that okay with you? Excellent. And that's also why I'm taking on a softer tone, is simply because I don't want to wake the patients. We've already done our best to kind of soothe into, you know, sleeping. But before we begin, I'm going to be needing to collect some information from you. You know, the background information, you know, the usual stuff. Home address, name, first, last, middle, if you have one, middle initial, though. Um, phone number, contacts in case we need them, um, profession, um, your phone number, um, reason for whatever, you know, is causing you trouble, etc, 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 etc. Okay, so let me just open up, and then I'm going to open up to a fresh sheet of paper, so that way I can start There are people who like doing these matters very slowly, there's others who actually prefer them a little more erratic, so we'll be blending the two styles. perfectly okay. It's just a creepy little doll thing that I have no idea when that was drawn, who was it was drawn by, and what exactly it is. But I might have... No, I don't think I drew this one. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Those don't look like the sort of eyelashes I would draw onto a cartoon character, so I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to be needing to collect some information from you, so if you are willing to partake of our sleep clinic process, then, get, then you being, you know, as expressive, or not expressive, but as detailed with your information as you can will be incredibly beneficial to our purposes, especially when it comes to the part of why you're here and what exact, what other steps you've taken in order to resolve whatever sleeping problem you're having at the moment. Is this okay? Excellent. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be needing you to do is tell me your name, please. First, last, and middle initial, if you have a middle name. If not, just say. is your home address. Okay. And that's with um, two L's, correct? Okay. And then in which city is that in? or a phone number, please. 
Area code included, please. Thank you. And then the phone number 2A, most reliable contact for you. And then what is the name of this contact and their relationship to you? Okay, excellent, thank you. And is there any other contact information that you might want to put down, an extra contact in case this per person isn't available at the time that we might be needing them? Thank you so much for the information collected so far. And then do you know what their availability is in case they work or go to school or anything of the sort? Okay. Excellent, thank you. And then with what insurance company are you with again? Okay. Just so that way we know which company to bill for the bill. And then, what is your reason for being here, of course? What is the, is there a medical underlying route? Have you seen a doctor about this? Do you have a, a referral to come visit us? Or is this of your own accord? Okay. So you chose to visit us. And so you have no medical background on whatever is ailing you. Okay. No medical background. So, this will be your first time being, you know, monitored for any sort of troubles going on neurologically. Are these symptoms you're experiencing? Are you experiencing some sort of, you know, disturbance late at night in the, in the form of night terrors, nightmares, or is it just the very falling asleep action that is kind of difficult for you, or you just can't fall asleep? It is truly stressful to not be able to fall asleep. Is there anything that has exp that you've been experiencing in your life? Any sort of, you know, recent trauma or any recent sort of thing that you might be looping in your head. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Alrighty then. In that case, there might be something affecting you neurologically. So we're going to be scanning you and making sure that you're all hooked up so that we were able to monitor you from head to toe. So. And your symptoms. What form do they take? Like, are they where you just can't go to sleep, or are you having any sort of anxiety? You're waking up sweating, crying, or you can't control your bodily fluids? Any sort of reaction that way? No. Okay. Alrighty then. Okay. So let me just review over the information. Everything seems to be in order. Let me just... Put that book over there. And now we are ready to begin the sleep clinic, sleep analysis, sleeping test process. So, to give you a little bit of a rundown as to what we're going to be doing now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hooking you up to some electrodes. They will be monitoring your electric, here, the electrical pulses within your body and kind of monitoring your 
monitors monitoring your system as you sleep to kind of give us an indication to what levels your body goes through or what levels your body shifts to when sleeping so that way we can better gauge what activity your your unconscious self is exhibiting if that is okay with you okay perfect some people usually kind of get nervous when they hear electrodes or they end up kind of saying that you know they're going to be hooked up to something because they usually like think that they're going to be given electric shocks which is not the case this is electrodes that monitor your own electrical impulses this isn't something that will give you electrical shocks so it's perfectly perfectly fine and you're not going to be like hooked up to it it's just going to be like little sponges that are just going to like stick onto your head and around the areas that we need to cover that will be kind of sensitive to any sort of pulse that it picks up basically now to explain why i've been wearing some headphones and why there's a lovely little microphone right here this is just to further monitor whatever sounds were being picked up right now between the two of us and to monitor the conversation we're having to see if there's any sort of like nuances within your speech or any nuances within your any sort of like well just within your speech to be honest but sometimes you can pick up on certain physical reactions for example you can sometimes hear a foot tapping or any sort of nervous twitch like you know fingers kind of like jittering or twirling or like hands sort of like jittering and whatnot so and this is why we keep the microphone to kind of have a audio recording of whatever might be happening at the time not to mention you know a fast heartbeat could also sometimes be picked up depending on how nervous the patient is so these are all things that we want to make sure that we have in record so that way we can start kind of figuring out what might be the root problem of your you know problem basically so don't you hate it when you have to repeat the same word within the same sentence I do. Now, for the electrodes, the way I'm going to be hooking them up to you, and once again, hooking them up means just kind of sponging them onto you like that, kind of sticking them on like a sticker, with only a sticker with a cable attached to it. I'm going to be putting some electrodes onto your scalp area, one on either side of your temple, along your hairline, and then also towards the center of your skull and then i'm also going to be hooking up a couple of electrodes at the top of your pectoral muscles one on each side i'm also going to be hooking up a microphone right here at the where the collarbone kind of dips in so that way you can better monitor your cardio 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 activity i apologize my brain is not with me tonight and I'm also going to be hooking you up, or putting some electrodes on this area and on this area. And I'm also going to be putting two, one on each calf, and also one on each ankle, and also one on each wrist. And I'm also going to be putting on a little finger, sort of like monitor, to monitor the heartbeat within your fingers. To kind of, once again, monitor your cardio activity, the beat at which you are. To begin, I do have all of the electrodes that I'm going to be needing right here.
perfect. Now, I'm going to be putting on these little, hooking, sponging on these little electrodes to the top of your scalp. If there is any discomfort, any tenderness in certain follicle areas, because sometimes there is some tension when it comes to certain parts of your hair, especially if you put, or especially if you have the tendency of putting your hair up in a bun or in a ponytail, there is going to be some tension there because you're constantly putting stress on the follicles within that area, thus on your scalp. So if there's any tension at all or any pain that I'm causing you, please inform me. So I'm just going to be hooking you up along the hairline first and then we'll continue down the middle of your skull there we go and then for the hairline a little more Also going to be putting one right here and then another one right here so that way it captures your it just kind of gives you a sort of like you know make sure that has good coverage around your skull so there we go and there we go okay let me just check okay and then i'm also going to be placing a couple of electrodes on the back of your skull as well, right here, in the occipital area. So, let me just kind of go behind you. Okay, so now that we're done with the head area, we're going to be working on your chest. Once again, one right here, one right here, another right here, and then you're done. So it's not going to be as lengthy as the last one. Okay, so, would you mind lowering your shirt down a little bit? Thank you. That'll be perfect. So, one electrode there, and then the other. holding out your arms. Now that we're in this area, might as well just cover those particular spots as well. Okay, excellent. So, there we go. I'm going to simply hook on an electrode onto here, and then another electrode, if you wouldn't mind holding out your arm again. Excellent. Another electrode on that Then, now that we're in, you know, the way we design the sleep clinic is that it's like on a bed, like everything's just a bed. It's like a huge pillow. All the floors are pillows. The walls sure are just like, you know, walls. We couldn't do anything about that. I mean, structurally, that would have been so irresponsible of the architect, to be honest, but otherwise, the floors are pillows. The surroundings are kind of covered with pillows, as you can note from the little, like, the little borders on the walls that kind of hide the, where the wall meets the floor, they're covered up by pillows. And if you, once we're done with the electrodes and whatnot, I do have a couple of blankets and little like fuzzy little sweaters that you can wear right afterwards on top of the electrodes to kind of keep you all snug and warm. Okay, so now that your legs are kind of furled up and kind of in a crisscross applesauce sort of way, I'm going to be putting on one electrode onto your calf, the other one to your calf, and then one on your ankle, the other one on the other 
ankle and also on your wrists since I missed that. So, one on your ankle, the other on the other ankle, and then the other wrists. So, one on that wrist and then the other on that wrist. So, you're all set in regard to the electrodes. Now, if you wouldn't mind holding out your finger, excellent. I'm just going to be putting on a little clamp to kind of monitor your heartbeat on the finger. And now I'm going to be using this hair tie to kind of keep all of those wires together so that way they don't really end up bundling up on you so just give me one moment to kind of tie everything up so there we go that should kind of take care of everything so you're all hooked up is there anything that's uncomfortable is there anything that's kind of like a little bit loose that you might feel i kind of tried my best to make sure that it was really on there but like if there's something that's a little loose or perhaps something that's kind of like placed on in a way where it's kind of stabbing you a little bit if you wouldn't mind just kind of like feel free to tell me if you are uncomfortable okay you're, you're perfectly okay excellent you're perfectly fine now i do have once again some blankets and some snug snuggly um sweaters down there so i'm just gonna And also, I forgot to mention that I do have this little necklace here with sand and little seashells in it. And as you can see, like a little golden starfish that a colleague of mine made for me. And it is very sweet of her. And I often like playing with it a little bit because it's like the sound it makes is very nice and the fact that it's sand. But anyways, so, put on the little fuzzy sweater first. And yes, it is just like a grandmother sweater. Feel free to wear this. If you wouldn't mind lifting up, I'll just put it on you, so. There we go. And then for the little snuggly blanket that I have here, which is very, very soft and I like it very much. It's very nice, to be honest. So. This is going to be Not like itchy fuzzy, but like a good kind of fuzzy. The good kind of fuzzy, the good kind of fuzzy, the good kind of fuzzy. I'm just going to kind of place it over you, and then I'm just going to like press it in on the sides, so there we go, and then on the other side just kind of tuck it 
tighten that and put that beneath you as best as I can so that way it's nice and snug and tight. And then is your, are your pillows adjusted quite well? I mean I could always give it a little bit of a check just to make sure that everything is situated properly. Okay, perfect. So everything is in, you know, accordance to how you're feeling right now. You're feeling, you know, more kind of fluffy and soft and whatnot. Okay, excellent then. So, in conclusion, I'm just going to be jotting down everything that I can kind of note about your physical appearance and about the way you are situated at the moment so that way we can keep a record of it. I'm going to be inputting this information into my computer. So if you could just give me one moment, I'm going to be jotting this down so you are in a sitting position with your feet against the bed. Were you giving your complimentary fuzzy socks when you walked in? Excellent. Fuzzy socks. And how is your body temperature at the moment? Too hot, too cold? Just fine. I can tell because your leg is sticking out. So you usually like when you're entirely covered, but you only have your legs sticking out for fresh air. Perfect body temperature. Okay, excellent. And now that all the information has been collected, I'm going to be reading to you the first quartet of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, entitled The Burial of the Dead. Ear to ear, ear to ear, ear to ear, ear to ear, ear to ear. So yeah, so. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with dried tubers. Summer surprised us, coming over the Starnbergesi with a shower of rain. We stopped in colonnade and went on in sunlight into the Hof Garden and drank coffee and talked for an hour. Vingar King Rossin stam aus Litauen, ekt Dusch, and when we were children, staying at the Archduke's, my cousins, he took me out on a sled, and I was frightened. He said, Marie, Marie, hold on tight. And down we went. In the mountains, there you'll feel free. I read much of the night and go south in the winter. What are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of this stony rubbish? Son of man, you cannot say or guess, for you know only a heap of broken images where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only there is a shadow under this red rock, come in under the shadow of this red dog, and I will show you something different from either, your shadow at morning striding behind you, or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust, free wet dirt wind, and there he met, zu mein irish kind, wo willest do, my German son. You gave me hyacinths first a year ago. They called me the hyacinth girl. Yet when we came back late from the hyacinth garden, your arms full and your hair wet, I could not speak, and my eyes failed. I was neither living nor dead, and I knew nothing. Looking into the heart of light, the silence, oh, it under Lirda's mirror. Madame Susurtris, 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 Famous clairvoyant, had a bad cold, nevertheless is known to be the wisest woman in Europe, with a wicked pack of cards. Here, said she, is your card, the drowned Phoenician sailor. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Look, here is Belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situations. Here is the man with three staves, and here the wheel, and here is the one-eyed merchant, and this card, which is blank, is something he carries on his back, which I am forbidden to see. I do not find the hanged man, 
fear death by water. I see crowds of people walking round in a ring. Thank you. If you see dear Mrs. Egerton, Egerton, Equitone, tell her I bring the horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Unreal city, under the brown fog of a winter dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge. So many I had not thought death had undone so many. Sighs, short and infrequent, were exhaled, and each man fixed his eyes before his feet, flowed up the hill and down King William Street, to where St. Mary Woolnoth kept the hours with a dead sound on the final stroke of nine. There I saw one I knew, and stopped him crying. Stetson, you were with me in the ships at Malay. That corpse you planted last year in your garden, has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year? Or has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh, keep the dog far, hence that's French to men, friend to men, or with his nails he'll dig it up again. You, hypocrite lector, mon semblable, mon frère. Hopefully you're able to sleep through that terrible reading of the first quartet of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. My German is not good, and my French pronunciation isn't that great either, but 